Azure API management is a crucial component in modern application architectures, acting as a gateway that manages and secures APIs. By providing a centralized layer for API management, APIM enables organizations to control access, enforce policies, monitor usage, and ensure consistent and reliable API delivery. One of the key features of Azure API management is its policy engine. It allows you to apply various rules and transformations to incoming and outgoing requests and responses. Writing these transformations often involve in using liquid templates. It is flexible, but sometimes cumbersome templating language. It requires a deep understanding of data structure and syntax. Writing and maintaining these liquid templates within Azure API management policy can quickly become challenging, especially when dealing with complex heavy lifting business logic. How do we deal with these kind of scenarios? Think about using C Sharp to achieve this. Can we move this logic to another C Sharp backend? The simple and easy way to do this is using Azure functions. Azure API Management has a send request API management policy to make HTTP calls. We can leverage the send request API policy to move complex transformation logic out of it. By making HTTP calls to this function from within your API policies, you can offload the complexities of liquid templates and transformation code to a separate dedicated Azure function. This approach not only improves code organization and maintainability, but also simplifies the API policy themselves, making them more readable and easier to manage. Also, as a developer, one of the problems we often encounter with these policies is the challenges it presents with troubleshooting and debugging issues. Can we debug these API policies? Yes, we can step through the API policy and debug them. In this video, we will configure a simple API policy. Then we will debug this API policy using Visual Studio Code. Then we will see how we can use send request API policy with Azure function. And we will secure this Azure function with managed identity authentication. All this can be configured inside your API policy. Hi, this is Shri. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I do blogging and make videos on .NET and Azure. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and help me reach this content to a wider group. Let's get started now. Here are the prerequisites we need to debug the API policies within the Visual Studio Code. First and foremost, of course, we need Visual Studio Code. Then the latest version of Azure API management extension for Visual Studio Code. Then API management pricing tier. As of this video, not all the API management supports policy debugging. It has to be the developer or premium edition. It is supported only in the developer or premium edition. Consumption and standard V2 won't work for policy debugging as of this video. And tracing should be enabled on the APIs that we want to test. Let's start the demo. I'm in my Azure portal. I have already created Infacto Azure API management service. If I go to the APIs, I have already created Infacto LA-V1 API. And this is a simple API which has a logic app as a backend. Infacto LA-V1. This logic app as a backend. This logic app simply returns the request that is received as a response. I have also added a simple inbound policy for this API for this specific operation here. If I go here, we have this simple inbound policy where we are setting a JSON payload before sending the request to the backend API. This is where we apply the transformations, add additional business logic before we sending any request to the backend service. Now let's see how we can debug this one in our Visual Studio code. I'm in my Visual Studio code. If you go to the extension, this is the extension I was talking about. We need Azure API management extension to debug the API management policies. Have this extension installed, then connect to your specific Azure account. Then under the specific API management extension, if you 
drill down under that extension it should bring up all your subscriptions then locate the subscription then you can view all the api management instances under this subscription if you expand this one there is only one api management instance under this which is in fact we are seeing that now expand this one you will see all the apis under this expand the apis then our api is in fact iphone la iphone v1 expand this one and we have the version set expand the v1 version set here you can see the operations you can see the policies at the version level and you just expand the operation this is our operation and if you expand the operation you can see the policy that we applied on this operation which is this one are debugging this policy now so to debug this policy as i said before we want to make sure we have the tracing enabled on our api management instance let's go back to our api management portal and see if the tracing has been enabled you simply go to the subscriptions we will be using this subscription for testing and the tracing has been already enabled on the subscription all good for testing now put a breakpoint simply right click on the operation and click on start policy debugging it should bring up this screen you should see this start over stop buttons and it will bring up this specific screen where you have a button here to send the request upon clicking the send request it will make an http call and it will start debugging our policy you can add any body that you want to send here for example id123 then you simply make an http request by clicking this send request button and if you see it started debugging it is starting with at a higher level policy the policy which we have at the at all operations level at api level then it will drill down into at each operation level now we are at our own operation level policy it is drilling down to that and you can debug step by step here add as it debug step by step on the debug page in here you can view all the variables for example request variable under the request you have the context under the context you have the request object again and you have the method protocol and everything request response api operation subscriptions and any variables that you might end up creating here and uh, the result that you want to store and for any operations you can have a variables created and store the values in them and use them in the subsequent operations those values can be seen here so you can pretty much debug view all the values as we step through here then outbound request and if you see we got the http 200 okay and this is our risk you can stop this policy by simply clicking on this one and it will simply just stop the policy execution for a moment if you go back to our policy so we can use the liquid templates here to apply the business logics and transformations and everything but if there is a complex business logic very huge and lengthy business logic it is very hard to put everything in the liquid templates and it look cumbersome and with the time it becomes very hard to maintain the better approach in this case is to move all this code to a c sharp backend and since we are azure everything runs within the azure environment the best and easy approach is to use an azure function what we can do here is as we discussed before we can use send request apim policy which can make an request to the http apis it can send entire request context to the azure function or whatever the api there you can do all the processing that you want to do and return a payload and the processed returned payload can be sent to the backend service for the demonstration purpose we will consider a simple use case which is to convert xml request payload into the json payload we will do this conversion within azure apm policies the xml to json conversion happens within an azure function we will be invoking azure function from azure apm policies using the send request apm policies the converted json payload we will be passing that back to the backend service for further processing for authentication mechanism between api management and azure function we will be using managed identity authentication we will enable managed identity for our azure api management service and we will grant the necessary permissions for this managed identity to access the azure function we can configure all of this within the apm policies 
let's look at this one i have written a simple azure function which takes xml request payload and converts into the json object and sends it back as a response. i have deployed this azure function into nfacto sample azure function it's already been deployed now we will be accessing this azure function from azure api management instance for authentication mechanism we will be using managed identity authentication for that we need to enable managed identity of our api management instance let's go to identities managed identities enable the managed identity for this api management now we need to grant this managed identity necessary permissions to access the azure functions to provision those permissions go to azure function go to access control since i have already granted those access i can click on check access i'm going to check to see if the api management instance has provisioned any access on this azure function you just select that and it will show you the permissions that was provisioned on this resource so the api management has contributor access which is full access on this azure function so to provision this contributor access you can go to the add role assignment you can go to privileged administrator role select the contributor go to next managed identities select the members in our case it's api management service and you select the api managed identity and select and complete that so since this is already set up we are good to access azure function from api management instance using the managed identity that's all set up now go to our apis this is our api and if i go to the policies here now let's see how we can invoke our azure function from this api management policies and convert the given xml payload into the json payload for the use case i have considered simply xml to json conversion but you can do a lot more than that you can put all your complex business logic into the azure functions and process the request before passing it to the actual backend service now let's see how we can use send request api management policy to send the xml payload to our azure function and the response we received from our, our azure function we will be posting that back to actual backend service i already have the policy ready let me paste the policy here and we will go over the policy really quick so the first thing is the send request apm policy which will send the request to given http url and here the response will be stored in the api response variable it is a post method and the content that we are posting is application slash xml and the body would be whatever the body that we receive from actual request that will be set in the body of this specific request and authentication mechanism will be the managed identity authentication and it will use the current running api management instance managed identity to connect to the azure function if you look at here once the call is successful the response is stored within the api response variable from the api response variable we are checking to see if the status code is 200 or not if the status code is 200 then we are simply reading the response which is the json content and passing that to backend logic app here if the response code is not 200 then we are simply throwing the error very simple easily maintainable apm policy there is no liquid template nothing here plain straightforward very easy to maintain all your business logic processing logic would go under this specific url you can use managed identity authentication api key authentication or even we can do OAuth authentication as well let's save this there is a copy paste mistake simply add an extra this one and hit save okay that is successfully saved now let's test this one for testing purpose what we can do is obviously you can do a test from here directly or we can even debug the same policy from the visual studio code to begin with we will do a test from here so the content type will be application slash xml and we will pick some sample xml a simple xml payload hit send so this is http 200 and if you see here we got the xml payload is two it this is simply a note two from heading body and we got two from heading body in the json format if you want to look at this in detail obviously you can do a trace enable trace for one hour okay that's all done and you can go to the trace to see the whole entire request the managed identity part within the policy so this is where the policy execution has started setting the header for our azure function request the xml then it's posting to our actual function app with the token that is being acquired it does all of that and 
the send request and you got the json payload back you are sending the json payload back to our backend service in our case our backend service is logic app we can go to the logic app to see if it has actually received the xml payload so 9 17 same time see it has received actually the xml payload we can go to the transaction search here and see for ourselves or we can simply go to the specific function and look at the execution count sample see, we have an execution count which has executed just now so this is one of the way which you can use to move all your business logic or all your request processing logic heavy lifting stuff that you have to another c -sharp backend of course we can use the liquid templates but if it is heavy then it will be very cumbersome or very hard to maintain with this approach it is very clean easy simple to maintain i hope you like the content if you like the content please hit subscribe like share i will catch you in the next video until then this is shri signing off thank you